So after more than a week now with the Steam Deck, I'm really enjoying my time with this device. I think it's a very impressive and capable system at its price point starting at $400 but I'm very curious to take a look inside of this system to see how Valve put all of this together with that custom AMD chip and sort of the configuration they went with inside and if it's good for repairability for someone at home who maybe has a drifting joystick, for example. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button and if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. So while we are gonna be taking this Steam Deck apart, I have every intention to get it back together in working order with all screws accounted for. So I have like this big gray mat here. I mean, I, I've, I've secured it down to the table and I'm just gonna draw all over it as I take screws out. And I think if you're someone who is opening a system for the first time, it's a good idea to have like a piece of paper nearby, some tape, and just organize the screws as you go along and take several pictures throughout the process. But here we are with our Steam Deck. Nothing on the front. We wanna to go to the back here where we have all of these Phillips head screws. None of them are concealed with stickers or anything there. And Valve did show us this part at least in their, in their tear down where they took the backing off and said, do not do this, which obviously wasn't gonna stop me at all when it comes to taking this thing apart and checking it out. And immediately I'm noticing on the back here that these screws are different sizes. So for example, this is a longer Phillips head screw. These two here are shorter. So right off the bat, you're gonna wanna keep track of that. You don't wanna take a longer screw and just go right through the middle here. You could actually run into, for example, the motherboard. There we go, all screws out. Also, don't forget about your SD card here if you have one in, since the case kinda goes around it. As expected, they do have clips holding the plastic casing together, just like a plastic spudger, or if you have a, like a like an expired gift card or credit card or something, you can use that. Just something that would be softer than this hard plastic and thin enough to kind of sit between and push these two edges apart. And it didn't take much to get this backing off, just a quick run of the spudger around and then sort of the bottom clipped off there. So no broken clips looking around this from what I can tell and everything that is laid out right in front of us. and. I'm noticing something. These all have labels on them for the ribbon cables. That is not common. So a quick look around our battery. We have right here. It sort of has like a cutout to go around the fan. Uh, the fan is like the big moving part that could have issues. So that is something we'll at least want to take a look at and how hard it is to remove this and then have to replace it. And it looks like here we have the top of our heat sink that is da then running down around here under this aluminum plate where our chip would be. I was trying to think of things that could go wrong with the system and people would eventually have to repair or replace. Things that came to mind were the thumbsticks, the fan, the battery, and I guess the compound on the chip itself. So let's start with the thumbstick since, I mean, we know stick drift is very, very common, it seems, across pretty much any controller, right? And immediately we have R and L to signify which sides we're on here and I mean, Looks like there's three screws and then one ribbon cable. This is the right stick here. All the screws are the same size, which is which is great uh, since you could get mixed up with those, but no issues there. And after unplugging the ribbon cable, the stick comes right out. I mean, that's the whole thing there. We have this red wire running up and under. I believe that would be for this little uh, sensor here so it can detect when you're actually uh, using the thumbstick with your thumb resting on top of it. But I like that this is one modular piece. This to me shows that Valve was paying attention at the entire landscape at the time when they were putting this together, since we heard so much about Joy-Con drift or even going back to things like the Xbox, we were dealing with stick drift since then. Trust me, stick drift with Halo 2 and that S-Type controller, that was a whole thing on its own. It's nothing new now, it's just become uh, more, more noticed online with something like Joy-Con drift, but drifting joysticks, it's it's been an issue for a bit. And as expected, the left stick, same deal there, three screws, this whole thing pops out, unplug the ribbon cable, and if Valve is going to start stocking just replacement parts like this, it's a pretty easy job to replace. So now let's turn our attention to the main board itself with the AMD chip, as well as the storage. I realize there are people who are wondering if they can upgrade, say, their 64 gigabyte model, or even technically this one. This is a 256 gigabyte model, so let's say I wanna go up to one terabyte of internal storage. You should be able to do that. So we had a smaller screw up here, a smaller screw down here, and they are pretty delicate. So you wanna be careful, make sure you have a, a smaller screwdriver to sit in there 
they did appear like they wanted to get stripped if you didn't use the right screwdriver, so just keep that in mind. And then it looks like Valve decided to hide a screw under uh, this aluminum tape here. And then our aluminum shield will go ahead and lift up. We do have some pads here just to pull heat off of the different spots. Specifically, it looks like the, the storage itself that can basically use this as one large heat sink. Also, I wanna point out that, remember those smaller screws that I was talking about from the back? Well, we can see they go through here and here, just in the uh, around the fan, kind of to hold that down. But one does come very, very close to the board here. And I'm not sure how far those screws would go through if they could potentially hit the back of the screen. So yes, make sure you are taking note where those screws go for the back. I do like to unplug the battery as soon as it becomes available to me. I just want to have the possibility of power running through the board while I'm taking it apart to basically be taken out of the equation. Uh, because like, let's say I'm t messing around with this and I hit the power button, then obviously you could have some issues thrown in there. So once you can and you remove this aluminum shield, just go ahead and unplug that battery. The battery itself is like glued down completely. I have no interest in removing that, but if say your battery is messed up and it's not working, it's less of a concern that you might damage the battery since it's already not functional. However, it looks like we just have cables running along here, the audio cable, and then one running down and around to uh, this board here where we have, uh, what's this? This is our D-pad and touchpad sensor here. Otherwise though, you would potentially heat it or you could just try to get under it with again, like a spudger or a, a, some kind of credit card or gift card or something and just cut the tape underneath and pull the battery. Okay, storage. One screw it looks like is holding this down and you should be able to upgrade the 64 gigabyte model. Valve has mentioned that it's possible. So this is where you'd wanna look. Uh, again, we have a screw. This looks like it's gonna lift up. We do have a, looks like almost like some aluminum padding or tape and that's kind of it right there. We have our, we have our, SSD here, NVMe drive. And we can see 256 gigabytes. This would be a 2230 NVMe drive. So you can look them up online and decide which one you'd wanna pick up and replace. And from there, I assume you have to load up the, the OS and everything again. Okay, back to the board itself. We have several cables plugged in here. And again, they're all labeled. We have MB for motherboard there, battery already unplugged. There's our fan cable and a bunch of other cables that are running down around to this separate board. Those look like two of them were antennas. So those will just pop right off. I'm seeing two smaller screws, one down here and then one up top. And looking at where the heat sink Screws in, we'll just have to grab these two. All right, heat sink is up and there is no shortage of thermal compound on, on this one. It it doesn't really hurt it at all. It's just sort of funny how much Valve decided this thing needed. Also, I just want to point this out. Valve has like lost their mind. I, I, I don't see this very often. They've labeled what looks like the screw types that go through the motherboard here. M1.6, uh, M1 down here, same deal, M1.6, but not where we would have to have the aluminum go over first. This is really good once again for helping you get this thing apart, but then also get it, to get it together in the right order. So a bit of a recommendation here for anyone taking this apart, I would unclip this side because these are both running underneath of the board. I would unclip this side, which will allow you to sort of fold the board over and then unclip this side, which is your audio cable. And then we can unclip and remove this cable and kind of put it back. So I cleaned off all of that thermal compound that Valve put on here, but uh, the board itself is shockingly small. And, and that's the funniest thing about this is people look at the Steam Deck and see how massive it is. And, and maybe they assume there's a huge motherboard in there. No, like half the thing, oh, maybe like 40% of the thing is the battery. And then you have a good chunk taken up by the fan. And in fact, when you start comparing it, like if I just flip over the Steam Deck, here's your board. I mean, that's, that's the whole thing there, right? That's operating this entire system. There's a lot more uh, in play here than just the board to make all of this work. And that's the thing that's most impressive about these lower power chips is typically they don't need a lot of room to operate and they can compact everything together in a very efficient manner. This in terms of size is very comparable actually to the, the Nintendo Switch's motherboard. But we know this chip here is fairly advanced compared to that X1, this being a Zen 2 four core, eight thread, 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz. On the GPU side, he's using eight RDNA 2 CUs, up to 1.6 gigahertz. All of this uh, ranging from four to 15 watts. And then located around the chip is 16 gigabytes of low power DDR5. Obviously we have 
four chips here. So we'd be looking at four, four gigabyte modules. You know, I also really like that Valve decided to stamp their, their company name right on the chip rather than just leave it as like AMD or something. Seems like they're not all in with this. No, no, it says Valve at the heart of the system. One thing though, I'm noticing that is pretty frustrating is that the USB-C port at the top of the system where you would charge or use to transfer files back and forth it's soldered to the main board, it's not modular. And in a system where they went above and beyond making other parts of this modular, it's a shame that this isn't because I mean, one wrong pull of that cable and it's damaged, can't charge anymore, you're kind of in trouble there and it's not an easy fix. You would have to go through desoldering this, soldering a new one on and USB-C ports are pretty frustrating to deal with. Anyway, back to the system, I wanna check one more thing and that has to do with the fan. I have noticed some people mentioned online that they are getting getting like uh, wine from their fan. They're unsure if there's an issue there or they're concerned about maybe the longevity of the device. Well, the good news is it's actually pretty easy to get to the fan. I, I mean, I'm, I'm lifting it up now and I didn't have to go through all of that other stuff to get here. Uh, you will have to be able to unplug the fan, which means you may have to then remove that aluminum shield, but otherwise it is at least right there looking at you when you take this apart and it's just a plug-in, so it's pretty straightforward. Couple of screws around the edges. This one, remember, was from the back and it'll pop out. You unplug it from the main board and you replace it with a new one. I mean, I'm sitting here looking around this system System, and it really does appear that Valve understands that down the road things will be damaged in this and making that repair process easier will benefit them as well as you, the customer. Like even like the headphone jack here, I'm noticing this is shared with volume up and down, but it is just one piece that you would replace. And it's pretty simple, a couple screws, you would unplug this, pop it out, drop the new one in. and. If Valve does get to a point where you go on their website and you need this audio board or you need this uh, one of these thumbsticks uh, or you need a fan and you could just kind of fill up a cart and order whatever you needed, that'd be pretty good in terms of longevity for these Steam Decks. But I think that's as far as I'm gonna go with the Steam Deck right now. I still have a lot of stuff I wanna use it for, so see if I can get it back together. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Everything seems to be working pretty well. Yeah. All right, good. So after taking it all apart, putting it back together, there's the fan is starting to spin up. So good news there. Yeah, everything seems fine. And that's gonna do it here for a quick look inside of the Steam Deck. I have to say, after going through this system, taking it apart, getting down to the board level and che checking out the accompanying parts, I'm pretty impressed with Valve being able to get this system out at that baseline $400 price tag. I know people look at it as, oh, the AMD chip they included, the 16 gigabytes of RAM, but you go down to the point of repairability and the attention to detail here where they mark out certain screws, ribbon cables. It's very forward thinking in that they are giving users more of an ability to replace and preserve their own Steam Deck. And that's great, putting the control more so in the hand of the users as opposed to doing things like soldering the, the M.2 SSD just to the board, right? Making these thumbsticks part of the motherboard to where you can't change this stuff out. I like what I'm seeing here with the Steam Deck and I do hope it's something that Valve continues as a line of devices going forward into the future. But let me know what you guys think about the Steam Deck with the teardown and really how it's all put together. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>